A lot of people have written in and asked us to do a video on all of the great things to buy when you're just starting out cooking, you know, kitchen essentials. And we're very big on showing people how to not spend a lot of money, but get the most and the most bang for your good buck. We both learned how to cook really in college. You know, we both lived in dorm rooms with just microwaves, all different types of apartments with not too many appliances, not too many utensils. So we've kind of built up an array of things to really start you off in the kitchen. We've done it all, we really have. And one of the first important things in the kitchen, saucepan. Boom. This is like a medium sized saucepan. They're smaller, they're larger, but this is great all purpose because it's cheap, you know, it's probably 20 or 30 bucks. It's lasted us many, many years. That's like a six year, yeah, seven this is year a Six, now. seven years, it's still good. It was worth the buy. And one thing that's great about this is you can boil water in here. You can make pasta, you can make barbecue sauces, you can make stocks and soups and pretty much everything for like anywhere from one person to four people, you can cook with this, which is great. I agree with that. Agree. Now the other important pot to have is a nonstick just regular pan, saute pan. The importance of the non-stick is that if you have a regular saute pan, a lot of things that you're cooking are going to stick to it and you're gonna be like, God damn, the bag is stuck and it's gonna pull off batter and screw everything up. This is great. You gotta be careful because it won't stay non-stick if you're using metal and spoons on it. So make sure you're using wooden or plastic or, plastic or rubber only, otherwise you're gonna screw it up. So you buy one good non-stick about this size, you can, cook burgers on here, you can make eggs, eggs are especially great, pancakes, just about anything. It's just gonna make your life a lot easier when you're starting out in the kitchen. Yeah, you don't need to use as much oil and butter um, to cook because it's not gonna stick. Exactly. It's one of my personal favorite things in the kitchen, you'll see us using a lot, squeeze bottles. Oh, we call them yeah. zip bottles. You take it, you zip stuff. Life is heaven when you have these things. We even started putting in oils, vinegars, even dish soap, just be careful if you're gonna use a dish soap that's colored dish soap or you will start squirting dish soap into the goddamn food and it's oh, not Oh yeah, we've had floral tasting pizzas and pastas, okay. I've tasted it all. Well, to go along with the zip bottle is the funnel. Funnel is very essential, you just take the long hard tip and you insert it into the open <laughs> hole, like so. You know a lot about tip inserting yeah. long hard. But... <laughs> and then you pour in and yeah, and it's it comes down. You can even go like this and squeeze it down, which is great. But the funnel is great to have if you are getting into the zip game. Zip game will change your life forever. If any kitchen store is gonna sell these zip bottles, we call them. And just grab like a case of four of them for, I don't know, $10. You're gonna save so much money because you don't have to buy those fancy glass ones. And you can put all your oils in there and your and, sauces and, and, and you, your ketchup and anything. Yeah, and yeah, and even sometimes we'll like, you know, you, you, people can buy sauce and put it in there. And, and But if you have your own sauce bottles and people open your fridge, you're just gonna look cooler. People are gonna think like, oh my God, this is a special sauce. It doesn't say Heinz on it. It doesn't say barbecue, it's just blank, and you just know what it is. And then you'll have people start sneaking in your house just to try your sauces. Yeah, sauce yeah. game, yeah. and the next thing you know, your daughter's knocked up, there's money <laughs> missing off the counter. I've seen it a hundred times. So we're moving on, we're moving on. We have knives. Knives. These are classic chef, well, this isn't a classic, this is a zebra print, but this is what you want to start off in the kitchen. It's a chef knife. It's about six inches. They sell them bigger, smaller, but something around this size this is your all-purpose chef's knife. That's why they call it a freaking chef knife. Because... More of a seven, eight inch. Makes more of a six, I'd yeah. say. Come on. Still pretty, pretty good. <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with average. No, that's a lie. Yeah, so these are your chef's knives, and basically they're good for all-purpose cutting. You can slice, you can chop. Just get one of these. Slicer, dicer. You can cut your shoes out with these things. <laughs> Don't cut your shoes out. The other type of knife is a paring knife that we suggest you get in your kitchen because it's a little smaller. It's good for slicing fruit if you're doing some small herb slicing. It's also a great beginner knife if you're not ready to handle one of these big boys. Mm -hmm. Start with this and slowly work your way up. It's a really great travel knife. And these, anywhere from five to ten bucks. If you're spending ten dollars, you're still getting a pretty, pretty good knife. And you can spend more, but no need to. Um, they usually come with even like a little case so you can take them anywhere. Honestly, you just need a knife that you can keep sharp. That's the most important thing because all knives over time will wear out. So as long as you keep it sharp, which is gonna happen with one of these things, this is a steel rod, very nice for keeping your knife sharp. We'll show you how to use that later. Yeah, once we learn how to use that, we'll do a video. <laughs> 
You can but, also, you know, buy a knife in say the twenty to fifty dollar range. Don't invest in something real fancy just yet, because we're gonna first show you how to sharpen it. And that's Thirty bucks, you can get a really good knife, like beginner's knife, if not twenty. Yeah, exactly. Cutting boards, very important as well. That's a plastic and this is a wooden. They both work great. They both are gonna keep your knife sharp rather than cutting on a glass or a hard wooden surface. Avoid those two because they're gonna dull out your knife. And you know, these are great because for, uh, for, a, plastic cutting board, <laughs> for a plastic cutting board, they're easy to maneuver around the kitchen, very easy to wash. Wood is fun because it looks a little better, but your food is gonna seep into the wood. Say you're cooking with meat, try to avoid wooden cutting yeah. boards and stick with the if plastic. If you're just gonna get one cutting board, it's good to have a nice, like, semi-thick, sturdy plastic cutting board because if you're cooking raw meats, like Mike said, you're not gonna wanna put raw meat on here because it is gonna seep into there. This will keep it off, it's easier to clean. You don't need one this big. You can even get one, you know, a quarter or a half of the size. Even the half the size will be perfect, but getting a cutting board is an essential part of cooking. Essential. Moving on, we have these two ramekins right here, and one keeps our salt, one keeps our pepper. Always great to have little containers like this in the kitchen for spices, especially salt and pepper, so it's easy access. You're using these in almost every dish that you make, so just buy two little ramekins. You can make them out of just old cups or something yeah. like that. Game changer. Game changer. Oh, speak, speaking of game changers. True game changer. This thing's been with us since, I bought this in college a few years ago and it's made it through. You can see it's pretty nasty and grimy. So nasty that they wouldn't even let us use it on our first season of our cooking show. Yeah. But we, we yeah, got, got rid of the person that told us we couldn't use it. <laughs> Let's go right if you watch Food Network, you will never see a true food processor because a true food processor has like old bits of food in here. This is like a, There's all the always flavor like a section where you can't get to and just yeah. grind. How they keep that clean on TV, I don't know. It's impossible. It's not even worth trying. But this is perfect. This is a small little food processor. It costs us about twenty-five to thirty dollars. It's a Cuisinart, but they make this in so many different brands. It only has two settings, chop and grind, so you can't screw yourself up. And really, this is all you need for small time cooking for one to four people. You can make sauces in here. You can cut up onions if you don't want to sit there and you know, create tears all day. But so essential to have. I remember calling my brother up and he was telling me about all these sauces he made. And this was the way he made them. Changed my life. 20 bucks for that. That, that is a game changer. You can get a bigger one. Enough. Bigger ones are great. But honestly, nine times out of 10, you only need the small guy. You can even make peanut butter. You can make hummus in that thing. You can make dressings. Salsa. It's got this little slot on top where you pour oil in and it slowly seeps into the dressing and emulsifies. It slices, Great. it dices, it, it dresses, it, it emulsifies. <laughs> it salsifies. Kitchen it utensils. Kitchen utensils. All right, I'm gonna show you my favorite first. We each One, pick our favorites. two, three. One of the best things to have in a kitchen, tongs. These things are so versatile they pretty much make your hand invincible because they take your hand and they make it longer and you can still grab stuff. So unlike a spatula where you gotta, you know, oh, be careful. This, you know, you're, you're cooking chicken, you grab it, you flip it over. He's guaranteeing superpowers and invincibility. You flip it over. <laughs> Everything, I mean, you saw Mike earlier in that tofu video. Uh, Mike, Mike made a tofu video and he was grabbing tofu, he's flipping it over. Now when you're using this, you wanna make sure that it's rubber. If you're cooking on a grill, it's okay if it's metal, but if you're using the non-stick, you want to get the rubber tongs. They're not going to screw stuff up. Also, you can lock it and then you can stir with this thing. So versatile, so great. Next one, spatula. Very essential. If you're making batters and you're making cakes and sauces and you don't want to waste, this thing is great because it is rubber, so it will morph to whatever you're doing. So let's say there's sauce in here. Actually, I'll show you. I've got some oil in here, right? If I use something else, it's gonna be like little pieces, but with a spatula, I can actually get all of it out. Now, the other thing is a wooden spoon. It's not super versatile, it's good for stirring, you know, and mixing. Beating. Like beating, and you can beat people with it, but. <laughs> beat meat, oh, not beat, beat people. Beat, oh, 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 you don't. <laughs> anyway, so the cool thing about this is that it just, 
it's sturdy. You're not gonna worry about like melting it. Like sometimes I'll leave this on the stove yes. and I forget and I'll burn. We've melted so many yeah. spatulas, watch out for that. It's Wooden just... spoons, you can leave them in sauces. They're not gonna like infuse their plastic flavor in yeah. there. Beautiful all purpose. So over here, I got this nice little spatula. This is a plastic spatula. And this is just great for flipping shit over really. You know, you got eggs, you got pancakes, burgers. It's like pretty much everything you make in the kitchen. That's all we so eat, eggs, pancakes. Very, burgers. very essential. Make sure you get the plastic if you're using the nonstick. Moving on, we got a slotted spoon. Slotted spoons are great, so you're cooking like bacon bits in here. You can take out the you bacon. You wouldn't want to use this though, because it's metal. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Moving on to the metal pan. So, you take out bacon if you're cooking it in your saucepan and you leave the liquid behind or the fat or whatever. Beans, it's great for great pasta. For, beans, yeah. yeah. Good stir. And this is a microplane. You don't necessarily need one of these fancy gadgets. You can use a regular grater. This is a little more versatile in the kitchen because you can hold it up and grate over things. It's just easier to use. Um, just let's say a, it's great. It's, it's great. <laughs> it is great. One more, we got a dish towel. So important for cleanup. Also, if you're taking things out of the oven, you don't want to burn your hands, you don't want to put on one of those mitts. Just awesome to have dish towels. Just buy a bunch of these and then wash them every month if you're us, I don't know, three months or yeah, something. Yeah, and all you do is go like this. You'll see us a lot on a show just hanging over the shoulder. It's there, you can wipe your hands off, you're yeah. cooking. You're like almost a chef if you just throw that over your shoulder, I swear. Almost. The cool thing about all this stuff is price range, literally we're talking two to thirty dollars. Nothing here is above thirty dollars, and that's even pushing it. It's true. But it's worth, you know, investing in a few good things. Get a good knife, get a good pot, get a little, you know, mini food processor. And then all these things are cheap, they're simple. But it's good to buy this kind of stuff because as you grow and as you learn, you'll get more and more things. Yeah. You don't have to buy it all at the same time. Just slowly build these things up. All of a sudden, you're gonna have a kitchen full of shit. I swear, that's what happened to us one day. We just had every had appliance everything. possible. And you know, then you'll be cooking away and you'll be a chef, I swear. Guaranteed. Yeah. Tune in, we're gonna start showing you guys our other weird, crazy gadgets, but these are the essential kitchen tools that we think of. You can make probably any dish. You can cook from one to four people, if not more, with all this stuff. And you can make just about every basic to even more advanced dishes with everything here.